There's 70,000 people. Okay. And so you, you're seeing a lot of housing growth. We've got another 2,000 houses in production currently. Okay. And so we've become known as the new American backyard. But really tied inside of there is what does it mean to you when you get up in the morning and you have to get to work? You have a sense of value for what the time you invest getting to and from work. Some have the benefit of working from home, some do not. Okay? And so transportation is actually the key. And when you look at the 580, 680 corridors, you're seeing this electronic toll system. Well, I was part of the design element of that technology. And through that, I understood how can I actually influence positive change in people's day-to-day -day life. When they get home, how do they get home and spend more time at home? It's through amenities, okay? Ensuring that you have the necessity within reach, becoming pedestrian friendly. Ensuring your children have safe elements. I ran the Alameda County Safe Routes to School program, becoming the largest national program. And through there, you really learn to connect. You learn to connect to the core values of what people today need and what they are passionate about when they get home. It's their family, it's their personal time. It's not getting the aggression that you have in the Bay Area with traffic issues. So it's really focused on not just our local city, but focused at a regional level. And I work with a bipartisan group to really make sure that our voices are being heard and that our core problems are being solved. Slow down the housing until you have the necessary infrastructure. Focus on how you can get to and from quicker. Breaking down the barriers. When you look at transportation infrastructure that started to formulate in the 1970s with BART, where was a barrier to circulate around the bay? Why are we second in the international community? Why is high-speed rail taking so long? Why are we having environmental problems taking a long term to deliver? What you're seeing for me is actually that foundational value that does not exist in many political bodies of actually having worked through a system and trying to actually change the processes. So you hear at the legislative level changes that are happening with the environmental process. I'm gonna leave you with a snippet and say, how long does it take an average highway transportation project to be built? It will take you two and a half to three years to just get past the environmental process. It costs 30 to 40 percent of its overall construction construction cost in its just the environmental phase. How do you break down that barrier? How do you get to the solution? When that project is delivered, it's already 25 to 30 percent of its longevity built out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what is it that made me really happy about the job I have right now? I can, without any doubt, say one thing, and I'm really proud of it. In order to make you appreciate what I'm going to tell you, I want to give a little bit of background. We, in our city of South San Francisco, right now enjoy the reputation of being the world capital of biotechnology companies. The biotechnology companies started 20, 40 years ago with Genentech, with a little 3,000 square foot plot in our city. There was no industry before that, so we were the birthplace. Since then, we have 214 companies come and join that, including Merck, Johnson & Johnson, Amgen, and many others. Anyway, every, and our city total population is 65,000, 67,000. Every day, 20,000 people come from outside because they're employed in the biotechnology industry in our city. Out of the 65,000 people, we have one third of the Hispanic population, which is not traditionally oriented towards education, college, and higher scientific careers. So they end up being in the lower rungs of the society, generation after generation after generation. So my goal was pretty simple. I want to create a bridge between those high school kids from Hispanic county, from Hispanic community, to the lucrative jobs in biotechnology industry.
through education, through higher education, through scientific education. So three years ago, I created a small group of people who should be concerned about this situation. So I got the county of San Mateo through Supervisor Dave Pine, the uh, superintendent and trustees of the school district of South San Francisco, the dean of sciences from our community college, and the nonprofit organizations which were working in uh, Berkeley to create biotechnology industry for underserved students. And our city, we all got together three years ago and we said, let's not work in silos. Let's not just work, school system working for school, college working for school, college, industry looking for their own goods, cities looking for their own goods. Let's all work together and see if we can create a bridge between the high school kids and the scientific world of biotechnology industry. And I'm so proud to say that it has happened. Last year, Genentech started a program called Future Lab, in which they have adopted, literally adopted, the children of South San Francisco as someone they would like to train in the future careers of biotechnology. They have actually started a constructing a new building on the campus of the school on their own expense called Garage Lab, in which they are duplicating the exact environment of a biotechnology lab for the kids from junior, senior, and other levels of high school to come and work under the guidance of volunteers from Genentech as teachers. And the college community has started a coursework which will continue those high school students onto their uh, certificates and on to the college. And the Genentech industry, normally Genentech, the industry in general have promised us internships, summer internships. Genentech has announced two scholarships with $25,000 each for four years for the best students from the schools who could show, who would show interest in science and the career like that and who come from underserved communities. I'm so proud of it, and I'm, I'm happy to be a politician. Congratulations, that's excellent. Wonderful to hear. Um, when I ran uh, three years ago, I ran on the platform of helping seniors, the youth, and doing a lot for the environment. And I have to say that in these last few years, I've moved the needle significantly in all those three fields. And I see that as a really positive achievement. Um, we all work with, uh, depending on the size of your council, it will be four additional people, six additional people, eight additional people. So it's very difficult to get consensus to move anything forward. One of the first things we did, and Cupertino was a leader in this, joined up with 12, uh, 11 cities and the Santa Clara unincorporated county to enact Silicon Valley clean energy, which means Currently, 12 areas in the South Bay, the residents can sign up for clean energy. You can go up to 100%, you can go up to whatever percentage you want to do, which was a very big achievement. Being the first city to actually enact that, help the other cities join us and say that, yes, let's do this. Let's put our effort into this, leave the planet better for the youth. And now, as uh, I would want to say, mid of April is when we launched. We already have huge sign-ups, and there'll be the second phase in July. We're expecting more and more uh, residents from the, six, six, two, the 11 cities and Santa Clara un unincorporated to join with Silicon Valley Clean Energy. The other thing that I think I've done is I broke the glass ceiling, especially in uh, Cupertino. <laughs> it wasn't my intention, but I raised awareness and empowered women. And that was the best side effect of running for office. Thank you, all the women who are here. And a lot of women are now running for commissions. Yeah, all of you, please become familiar with the commissions in your city. You heard a lot about the planning commission. But every city will have six to 12 other commissions, which are very, very important, very significant. They do a lot in the local community. The teen commission is a big one. I don't know if any of these young 
kids are in the Teen Commission in Saratoga. But we have a youth commission in, in um, Cupertino. So sign up for those commissions. Those are really, really very good. For the seniors, I'm sorry? There's a lady over there, Sabuhi. She wants to say something. So for the uh, seniors, because I'm also on the board of BTA, one of the things I was able to move the needle forward is do a senior mobility program. Again, jointly with the cities of Sar Saratoga, Las Gatos, and Campbell. We are moving ahead with that, and hopefully we'll have a senior mobility uh, pilot program very soon. Uh, trying to do as much as possible for our seniors. Everybody says, why the focus on seniors? I don't see anyone getting younger. We all, all of us, move only in one direction, and especially in these communities. And if you look as young as Daisy, it's really good. <laughs> uh, but all our communities have an aging population, so we really need to work on that. And again, with the youth, uh, I'm doing something very similar. Thank you, Rishi, uh, for what you talked about your interns. We are having an entrepreneurship program for our high school students. Uh, a lot of the kids are now getting involved in government, which is really exciting. I'm constantly talking to girls in government, boys in government, and those are the groups that I really enjoy because they ask me the most difficult questions. And you really have to think before you answer them because you have to you cannot dumb it down. You have to explain to them what exactly they are looking for. And I'm really, really enjoying that, and a lot of kids are getting involved. So I'm very glad to uh, try to at least uh, fulfill the promises I made during my campaign for the youth environment and seniors. And I, just, I just want to add to what uh, Savita was mentioning. And I'll repeat a line of uh, Nancy Pelosi, actually. She says this all the time. When women win, America wins. And that's a, that's a bigger line. It resonates with a lot of people. But I think, you know, I, I, Mohammed Dadi was telling me that I need to have a shout out for my wife, Seema. <laughs> <laughs> because good thing happened to me when, uh, you know, Seema is front, smack, and center doing stuff, right? So, yes. yeah, the reason I won uh, my election was because of Seema. You know? wow. <laughs> she can talk door to door, and she would just show up and smile, and people would say, we don't know that guy, but we'll vote for him. <laughs> Let's keep going, going to run. Well, are a lot of points today for uh, from Sima, right? <laughs> well, I was in the I was in the doghouse, so I think I'm out of it. Okay, good. Uh, well, I, I ran on four 